The Mendian Honey Falls Lima Sentinel welcomes you to this edition of the Mayor's and Supervisors Weekly Update, brought to you by... Each week, our community makes history. Each week, you make history. And each week, there's only one source to turn to for the first take on history. You know what that is? Subscribe to the Sentinel right now to discover the history being made in your own backyard. The Mendian Honey Falls Lima Sentinel. More than just your news, it's your history. Hey, welcome everyone to this week's uh, rendition of the Mayors and Supervisors Update. I'm Chris Carosa, publisher of the Mahenan Honeyoy Falls Lima Sentinel. And each week we bring you the goings on in the communities that we cover. This week we're going to start off with Rick Mill, Village of Honeyoy Falls, maybe some added bonus on Monroe County. What do you got, Rick? Well, Chris, uh, it's great to see everyone and uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I'm enjoying my last weekend uh, out of the community uh, in the woods, so please bear with me, but it's, uh, it's always nice to jump on this call when I can. Um, these last couple weeks, it's been a busy time, obviously, in the community with holidays, um, holiday activities. This past weekend, we had the, um, the uh, fire department parade, which was really well attended. Everyone had a great time. Sorry if you hear some noise behind me for a second. Um, and uh, the community concert band had two great shows, um, one in Honeyway Falls and one in the town of Menden at St. Catharines. And, and we just are so blessed to have that community concert band in our, in our, uh, in our area. Um, this weekend, we were supposed to have the Living Nativity on Sunday. And I'm told that that has been canceled uh, due to some unforeseen circumstances. Um, so hopefully we can get that back next year because that was always uh, such a meaningful gathering and hopefully we'll get that back next year. Um, but uh, this week has been active, obviously, with some real um, mixed weather. So Thursday afternoon, um, we had accidents all over the place. Um, I was actually in the city for a while at a... At a uh, service and on my way home I think I passed six accidents in the 490 area um, and that was en route to come home to see how our fire truck was doing. Um, our pumper 563 was responding to an MVA on Clover Street near Stony Lonesome um, or out near Menden Ponds and on the way down uh, Davis Hill as we call it um, the big hill coming out of the village and into the town and, and heading up north on Clover Street. Um, our driver was uh, going down the hill and all of a sudden he, he re reported to his crew that he had lost control. Um, the roads were in real, real perilous condition for everybody. I know the town crews and the village crews uh, had been out doing everything they could to keep it up, but you know, that, that weather was changing so fast from rain to sleet to snow back to rain. It was just treacherous driving, which is obviously why we had so many accidents. But as the truck was coming down Davis Hill, the driver reported he had lost control. Um, we were really, really lucky. Um, he maintained his composure. He rode it out as best he could. Um, the truck started going off the road and it was buried um, in a field off Clover Street, went through a ditch. Um, how that truck didn't roll, I don't know. But, um, you know, thanks to the, the town of Menden crews again uh, on Friday, as well as the Honey Falls DPW staff, um, they had to come in and cut down a whole lot of trees and brush off of 65 so the heavy uh, tow truck could come in and hook into the truck. They were afraid if they tried to hook it out from the back end, they'd rip out the axle and everything else. Um, so they had to come at it from the front end. Um, obviously our, our crews had to go in there and empty all the water out of the tank. Um, it was really quite a production, but they did get it out, um, had to put it on a flatbed and take it to a, a special frame uh, repair shop to, to give it a good look at. But you know, it's a, uh, you know, close to a half a million dollar piece of equipment, right? And uh, even though it's a few years old, um, you know, we worry about that expense. But at the end of the day, that's nothing, you know, when you look at our crews. So, you know, everybody was okay. Um, 
Nobody was injured. The driver did a heck of a job and we got lucky. So, um, but again, thanks to John and his staff for everything they did. Um, you know, it's, it's just always a tough situation. And, you know, we're, we're going through so many things right now with all of our volunteer services. Um, it's tough to get people to step up. And um, John's got a, a great committee going right now, looking at fire service in the, in the community overall, right? And, uh, but, you know, we struggle with the lack of volunteers um, and uh, we are just so blessed to have the ones that we do. So uh, kudos to the crew. Um, so this week um, we, we had the, uh, that, e that event happen and now we're um, looking forward to Christmas. I know we won't have this call next week, um, but we, we hope everyone has a great Christmas holiday. We have the Hanukkah celebration this coming Wednesday on the 21st at 5.30 where we'll have the uh, menorah lit um, and, and that lighting uh, procedure happen. So we're looking forward to that. And um, with the county, um, this week was a very busy week. We, we did indeed um, pass the budget um, with a unanimous vote um, to pass the budget this week. Um, and, and that wasn't after, I think it's important to say, that wasn't after a lot of dialogue a lot of discussions, a lot of questions. When you're talking about a budget that's over a billion, uh, over a, a million dollars, excuse me, over a billion dollars, um, it um, there's a lot of questions to ask. And the legislature, you know, we have to be the, the stewards of the funding and the, and the financing and and where the money goes. And uh, there were a lot of questions on it. And along with that, we did pass the ARPA funding this week. Um, and again. There were some uh, things in the media that said the legislature was holding up the ARPA funding, and that really couldn't have been any further from the truth. Um, the, the legislature was doing its job. Uh, while there was a committee that went through all the projects and scored the projects and, and then had their recommendations for what projects should be um, funded in this first round, it's truly up to the legislature to, to look at all those again and make sure that it makes sense and make sure that the money is being given out and spent properly. Um, none of the contract, contracts could be approved before the first of the year. Um, so actually we, you know, we approved this um, ARPA spending in, in plenty of time, but we're talking again about over $99 million that's going out. Um, so I think the legislator, legislature did its job. We, we worked hard. Um, we looked at all the projects and reviewed them. And again, I think the administration did a good job as well, but we have to do our jobs and make sure that we can answer to the people that elect us um, and, and, and make sure that we did our due diligence. And I think we did. So we're proud of that. Um, and we're now we're getting into the next year. And uh, again, I just hope everybody has a great holiday season. And I thank you, Chris, for uh, setting these calls up. I know the our residents really love it. So thank you very much and happy holidays to everybody. Thanks, Rick. Over to John Moffat in the town of Menden. What do we got going on there? Rick, I uh, just want to reiterate some of the things Mayor Milne mentioned is that uh, we do want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays for whatever uh, season you choose to celebrate. Uh, we're hoping that uh, people get together with their families and enjoy this time. We cert During the co uh, COVID, we certainly saw times when we weren't able to get together in, in situations like this. So I, I hope all of our residents do have an opportunity to spend time with family and friends. Uh, I would like to talk today, uh, one, before I get into the main subject, uh, I just want to report that the the uh, street light at the Menon Community Center has been fixed. It was uh, quite a buzz, I guess, on social media, and it was flashing. And of course, it was flashing off the white building, which uh, was was uh, uh, you know we tried to put a colored lens in it uh, to make it go like uh, green and, and red. Something? No, I'm just kidding. But uh, it has been fixed. It, it it took a little time but it has been fixed. So I uh, appreciate everybody giving us a heads up on that one. Uh, what I wanted to really talk about today was uh, a men in highway department. 
we have an elected highway superintendent. All towns do not necessarily have one. Our highway superintendent, Andy Cachetta, is elected. Uh, there is a difference between an appointed and elected highway superintendent. Uh, we currently cover 217 lane miles. That is on town roads, state roads, and county roads. Some of those county and town roads are within the village of Honeyeye Falls, and the town of Menden does maintain those as far as salting, plowing, that type of thing. Um, there are, we use on average 4,000 tons of salt. I know when you go to wash your car and you start seeing rust and things like that, that's not your favorite uh, thing to see that we use that much salt, but also when we have an event like Rick mentioned on Thursday, where we have freezing rain and uh, ice and, and raining conditions and snow all in, in the same small time period, uh, we certainly need that salt for that type of activity. Uh, there's 4.6 miles of snow fence that are put up uh, alongside the road to help deter the snow from filling in the road in various places where the wind can blow. Also, we have dispatchers that are on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Those dispatchers call out not only the town snowplow drivers, but the village snowplow drivers as well for the village on Ave Falls. And uh, they also monitor the roads 24 seven, monitor the weather. They're out looking for uh, in wind situations for down wires, down trees, uh, dead deer that have been hit uh, by cars, that type of thing. And that their pay is subsidized by both the state and Monroe County. Also, I wanted to mention that if you are cleaning out your own personal driveway, do not push or plow snow out into the road. That is against the law. So please don't do that. You're creating a uh, hazardous situation on the roads. Uh, if you have a fire hydrant uh, on your property, please clear that fire hydrant, make it accessible. We've had a couple of fires here recently within the town. We don't want any more, and we certainly don't want our firefighters trying to find a hydrant underneath a pile of snow. Uh, we do have, in the town of Menden, we do have some limited sidewalks in the hamlet, and that's one of the things we're looking at for 2023 is extending sidewalks, but we do not salt those sidewalks. We do plow them, but we don't salt them. So I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of uh, those things. If you have any questions, call the highway department. Uh, they'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions. And of course, with the, the other thing with this latest snowfall and it was wet, it was heavy. And even though the plow might not take out your mailbox, the uh, wet, heavy slush snow may take out your mailbox. So if your mailbox was taken down due to a snow event, the town offers you either $35 or we will come out and fix and or replace your mailbox. You do have to contact the highway department for that. And we certainly uh, are more than willing to help repair any mailboxes that are damaged during snow activities. One last thing, and probably the most important thing I'm gonna talk about uh, regarding this subject today is children playing in the snow. We have a lot of cul-de-sacs in town and it is very uh, appealing for kids to go out and dig into the cul this big pile of snow in the middle of the cul-de-sacs and play in there. Please do not allow your children to do that. That could be a very dangerous situation upon another snowfall. And, uh, uh, you know, certainly children love to go out and play in the snow. We're not trying to say they shouldn't, but not within the, the frame of the road. They need to uh, keep stay in their yard, stay back away from the edge of the road, because a lot of times that wing is pushing snow back from the edge of the road. So we certainly want them to go out and have a good time, but... Uh, be aware of that, and we want to eliminate those dangerous situations. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, John. Now over to Mike and the town of Lima. And John disappeared. <laughs> uh, how are we doing in Lima, Mike? I Pretty good. Uh, a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all. Uh, now is the time for parties uh, of all kinds to celebrate. So uh, the New York State Police, of course, have declared that it is a uh, DWI concentration from now right until the uh, new year. So uh, over the 1st of January, um, please be careful when you are out enjoying the holiday season. Along with that, there's a different kind of party we should discuss. 
uh, at the New York State level, uh, the, they have moved to strike the words independent and independence from all of the New York State ballots going forward. Um, there is a lot of confusion about the independence party and uh, folks who have wanted to be politically independent when they've registered, many have mistakenly registered with the independence party. Um, to be truly independent, you actually have to register as a blank. Uh, if you have any questions about that or you're not sure how you registered, of course, uh, your county board of elections uh, can answer your questions. And uh, if you need to change your registration or fix that up, they can help you with that too. Uh, try halo methanes. So THM. Uh, THM is something that uh, is on the minds of everybody who operates a water district. Uh, those THM levels, uh, depending on how high they are, dictates how often lines are flushed. And if you are flushing the lines on a regular schedule without testing the THMs, you may not be doing it often enough, or you may be doing it way too often. The only way to know is to actually test. The Livingston County Water and Sewer Authority, in partnership with uh, Livingston County, is purchasing a THM analyzer. Uh, this, the science in this is uh, incredibly cool and it's about the size of a laser printer, uh, but they can know now within 30 minutes what the THM levels are around the systems um, because it is going to be a, a bit of a shared asset. Uh, it will be opened up to the surrounding uh, municipalities to take advantage of quick testing. Um, normally to get your THM stuff tested, 50 bucks to throw and two or three weeks to get your results back, or you're paying two or three times as much to get a much faster test. This would, uh, would help everybody in the area. And uh, I do not know that it will be limited to just Livingston County. So something, uh, something to look forward to. Otherwise, Merry Christmas, and we will talk next year. All right. Thanks, Mike, and thank you all for being part of today's show. Thank you all for watching this show and, and all of our shows throughout the years that we've been doing this. We will be taking a break this week. We'll be back on the first of the year. That's right, January 1st with the next show, Sunday. You'll be able to see it at 1 o'clock, same time, same channel that you will always do. If it's a YouTube channel, just subscribe to that. You'll be notified when the show airs. If you prefer Facebook, like our Facebook page. And again, you'll be notified when the shows airs there, both these shows. Well, I guess it's only one show, but two different channels. One o'clock one o'clock on Sundays. That's when they'll air. And we will see everybody in the new year. Have a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, everything. Bye-bye for now. Merry Christmas. Imagine yourself communicating with a difference. Pandimensional Solutions helps you do this. Whether live spectator events, taped broadcasts, or real-time audience-engaging programs, you can benefit immediately from the tools Pandimensional Solutions will share with you. Do you want to make a difference? Contact us at pandimensional.com.